And welcome to In Depth tonight. If Indiana 8th District Congressman Larry Bouchon wins re-election in 2020, he would be serving his sixth term on Capitol Hill. Following 2018, though, for the first time, Congressman Bouchon is now facing a House chamber now controlled by the Democrats. Congressman Bouchon joins us tonight, and uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Bouchon. Well, thanks for having me on, Brad. I appreciate that. Well, I'll tell you, you have uh, left the door open, and then you've left the door closed. Not about 2020. You're definitely running for re-election. I, I am. 2022, you've kind of left the door, I guess, ajar a bit, and uh, that has sparking conversation. Yeah, it has. Are you going to hang up the spurs after well, 2022? Well, I, I, I think it's presumptuous to assume, you know, and announce that you're going to run in 2022 when the 2020 election hasn't even happened. So, you know, the way I look at it is every uh, two-year cycle, I, I have to prove to my constituents why I'm the right person to represent them, and then after that election and in the next term and then you know have a conversation about whether or not uh, I'll run for the next time so I, I don't try to be presumptuous that I'm gonna stay in Congress uh, you know like like I'm just planning to be there uh, I want to make sure that in 2020 I, I run for re-election and I prove to the constituents that I'm the right person to represent them how's your life changed on Capitol Hill since the Democrats assume control well it's much different because the Democrats control the House floor, and they control all the committees. So uh, committee hearings are decided by them what the subject matter is and who the witnesses are, except the minority gets one witness out of four. Uh, that was different before, obviously. And then the legislation that comes to the House floor is determined by Ms. Pelosi and her uh, leadership team uh, versus our leadership team. The big cloud right now over uh, not only the House chamber but the Senate as well is the Mueller probe. Of yes. course the report, the redacted report, is scheduled to be released Thursday right. uh, by the Justice Department. Uh, with that being said, Democrats are on Capitol Hill, on in the House, are trying to get a, as many hearings uh, scheduled not only to look, take a second look at yep. that probe, but that seems to be dominating uh, Dominating the news uh, since that was announced. Yeah, well, first thing, you know, I voted in the House to release the Mueller report. I think it's of public interest to the American people, and the Mueller report should be released as much as can be released. Now, there's some grand jury testimony that it, you don't release because there could be people's names mentioned in there who aren't charged, and that could affect their life adversely. And then there's uh, some other things that are methods that our intelligence agencies may have used to obtain information uh, when they do this type of uh, surveillance. Uh, and uh, so I'm hopeful as much as possible but will be released. But there will be some redactions out of necessity. I do think the House Democrats honestly need to move on because uh, the Mueller report, I think, is not going to show anything more than we've already heard from Attorney General Barr. And I'm hopeful we can move on and uh, start talking about things that really impact the American people and get past this. And, and uh, I won't dwell on the Mueller report, but yeah. it, basically President Trump has said it has totally exonerated him as far as collusion with the Russians. Yeah, but, I think that on that point, that's true. Okay, but uh, the Mueller report indicates that... Uh, a decision could not be made about obstruction of justice, and that has uh, yeah, realize, a few people troubled. Realize that that wasn't the role. That's not the role of the of uh, the of the Mueller probe. I mean, the Mueller probe, when it comes to obstruction of justice, is to turn over the evidence to the Department of Justice, and they analyze that as it relates to obstruction. So uh, that wasn't the goal, and that's not what. Prosecutors do is exonerate people. They press charges against people, and the president wasn't charged with obstruction by the Department of Justice. So. And, and what's your response to de Democrats saying that Bill Barr is not putting this on a level? Yeah, well, I field. think you know he was confirmed by unanimous consent on a voice vote when he was George H. W. Bush, Bush's uh, uh, Attorney General, and uh, he has broad respect across party lines in Washington. Uh, in the legal amongst the legal professionals in Washington, so I think, again, I think they they need to move on. I think let's get the report out as much as we can. It is of interest to the American people, and then I think we need to move on and talk about things that are actually 
affecting the American people's daily lives. And, and several issues, but it seems like this is uh, the issue that is really, really dominating conversation, and that is about the immigration policy, yeah. border wall funding. Where yeah. do you stand on that now? Well, first of all, we need broad immigration reform. You know, we have legal on the legal side, you know, sometimes people trying to get here legally takes a, a decade to get here. That said, you know, we take about a million people a year uh, legally, more than most other countries in the world all together combined. So we are a country of immigrants, but we do also have to control our borders. We're a sovereign country, and right now we need to change some immigration laws as it relates to asylum and it relates to some other loopholes that are honestly being exploited by the cartels uh, and uh, human traffickers on the southern border, encouraging family units and others to come to the border because of our, our laxed laws that need to be changed. What about the president's suggestion that yeah. uh, he could be sending uh, immigrants to the sanctuary cities? Well, I'm not, I'm not a lawyer in the administration, so I don't know what the, the law says and what the, but from a pol public policy standpoint, at this point, all of our detention centers are full. So we're literally releasing thousands of people every day into the country. And so they have to have a place to go. So I think, you know, sanctuary cities have said that they're not going to cooperate with federal government and ICE. Uh, and I think that's why the president made that comment. But I'm really not in a position to make a, a judgment on the legality of that. Net neutrality, uh, as you put it, the uh, net neutrality as Democrats uh, interpreted right. it, you, you voted against that. But there's a, a, a majority of Americans right now who are concerned about what is in front of them on those computers, their smartphones, yep. as far as their own security, especially in the social media realm. How, right. do, you, how do you reconcile that yeah, with opposing well, net Yeah, neutrality? well, those are two different issues. What we're talking about here... Uh, on the privacy side, on social media and net neutrality are actually two separate issues. With, net, with I think, a misnomer, net neutrality, uh, the Obama administration in 2015 put in what I would call heavy-handed rules uh, using Title II regulations from the 1930s that are used to regulate, like the telephones, uh, that are unnecessary for the Internet and actually stymie innovation. So um, we've gone back to the pre-2015 uh, regulatory uh, scheme, so to speak, with the with the FCC, and you know, prior to 2015, nobody had any concerns about it. What this is about is, about, in my opinion, is about uh, government control of the internet. And my concern is with Title II regulation, you're going to open the internet up to taxation, for example, at the local, state, or federal level, and you're going to have the government having more control over the internet, which I think should be open to innovation and technological advances. So it's really a misnomer. It's really not net neutrality. This is about government regulation under Title II, and that's the beef, because I support legislation that prevents, for example, paid prioritization, where people pay more and they get more access, or throttling or, or blocking access to the Internet. I support legislation that prevents all of those things. All righty. This landscape in D.C. is going to be changing and changing. Uh, yeah. We'll get into bipartisanship on our next conversation, but I appreciate you coming by tonight yeah, you're and talking, and uh, we'll see what happens in 2020. Uh, thanks, Brad. All right. Appreciate it. Congressman Larry Bouchon.